Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I thought as I was doing some maintenance on the office tanks in here, I've not talked about this guy for a while. This is Humphrey. He's my two-tone camphor flower horn. He's one of my um, more recent purchases, um, but I've not made a video on him in a good few weeks. So I thought we'd check in and see how he's getting on. So I don't know why I always do this, but I've picked as soon as I've finished doing my water changes and maintenance on this tank to start filming. So obviously it's all kicked up, all cloudy and dusty and yucky. And he's decided that he's gone all camera shy and is hiding away in the corner. But nevertheless, we shall try and give you a bit of background. So I've had him for now, ooh, I don't know how long I've had him. I shall check while I'm editing and type it in here. Um, but I've had him a good few months anyway, and he's, Massively put on size. His cock, so the big thing at the front, his nuchal hump, uh, his cock is getting bigger, but it isn't getting to the kind of crazy sizes you see on some flower horns, um, like the SRDs and things like that. I think they have more of a cock development, whereas this is a bit more slow growing because he's the camphor, um, but it's still very pronounced and it's definitely there. Um, but his colours, they are coming through really good and um, that's the thing that's impressed me most is that he does have these uh, the red is very red the yellow is very yellow and um, the, the kind of way the colors move throughout his body and the pearling it's all super bright and um, so I'm really pleased with his development his fins are looking great they've got lovely, lovely nice streamers on the end of his fins and um, yeah I couldn't be happier really with the health of him he does have a little bit of gill curl uh, that started to develop um, well, kind of as soon as he arrived, it, I noticed that it did get a little bit worse, but it hasn't got any worse since then. Um, gill curl can be either something that's genetic, um, which is a bit of a pitfall for these kind of hybrid fish, because they are hybrid fish, so they are more prone to genetic deformities and things like that. Um, so obviously I'd rather it wasn't there, but it's not actually hurting them, so it's not that much of a big deal. And like I say, it's not gone worse. It could also be down to things like water quality and your water parameters and that, but that's not the case in this one because I know the water quality in here is fine. Um, the nitrates have never got too high, there's never any traces of ammonia. I do test quite regularly. I've even got a monitor, like a constant monitor on here. This is my Felix Smart. Um, I'll talk about that a bit in a minute. So I always know what's going on in this tank, so it's definitely not that. Um, but like I say, it's more of a cosmetic thing, so it's an aesthetic thing rather than a, a health thing, because it's not hurting them, it's not stopping them eating or stopping them growing or anything like that. I could do surgery on it if I wanted to, to kind of shave it back and cut it back, but I think that's a bit extreme for something that's purely aesthetic. So he lives in here on his own now. In the previous videos, I had him in here with a Senegal Bicher, uh, and they were fine. They did get on, but I did catch him. I did catch him beating the crap out of him one day. So I've moved the biter downstairs. He's now back in the fish room and this guy's in here all on his own. I, I thought that might be the case anyway. Um, it was more of a trial for me to make sure it was something that I could check before I was comfortable with. And as I'm in this room every day, I work from here. I work from this room. Uh, I spend almost all day in this room. So I'm always here able to see and able to catch it if anything does happen so there were a few altercations a bit of chasing i kept eye on it a bit more and then he went for it so separated them took them downstairs there are still some um bristle nose plecos in here they seem to be fine and he ignores them pretty much and um, plus they can get in amongst all these rocks and the nooks and crannies and hide away if they need to um so that seems to be okay so keeping him on his own not such a big deal um, the tank itself, this is an old Hockney tank, it's like it's a really old tank. Um, it's just shy of three feet squared, so it's quite a big footprint and quite a large water volume. Um, I still think it's just about on the cusp for him, so I am thinking of moving him into a new tank in the fish room that I might get. But we'll see how we get on with that. I'm going to keep an eye on him a bit longer and see how he gets on when he gets a little bit bigger. Still plenty of space. I might remove all these rocks next. That's probably the next thing to do is just to give them a bit more swimming space. Um, so like I say, it's just shy of three foot this way, three foot that way. There's a sump at the back. I don't know if you can see that here, but this is an internal filter. So the intake's on that side. It goes down to the bottom, draws in from the bottom here, goes up, down, up, down, and then pumps back out here. And on here, I've got one of those Vortex spinning pumps. 
So it just kind of randomly generates the flow and keeps the flow going. He does like to play in that sometimes, I've noticed him playing around with it. He does like to attack it. And speaking of attacking things, he does like to attack me quite a lot. So it's healed now, but he took a chunk out of my finger a couple of weeks ago while I was in there doing stuff. He's very playful. Um, it's one of the things about the flower horns is, um, I think I've said it before in, a, in another video, my favourite fish obviously is discus because that's the fish that got me into the hobby. I've always kept discus and I love them. I think they're great, but discus are very much the cats of the aquatic side of the hobby where they don't really care if you exist or not. As long as you feed them, they're happy. They just float away serenely, quite the thing. Um, whereas this is like the puppy. This is the dog of the aquatic world. He's always up wanting to play with you. He plays little hide and seek games with me where I'll sit over here working. So my view is actually into this side of the tank, which is blocked a little bit by my printer here. But he'll come along, he'll peek out and wait for me to see him. And as soon as I turn around to see him, he darts straight back in again. So we play a little bit of a game of hide and seek sometimes. Um, anytime I've got my hands in the tank, if I'm cleaning anything, he's always up and around, playing around. And that's the thing that's worrying is I can never tell whether he just wants to play or whether he fancies a bite to eat. Um, I don't know if technically if they've got teeth, but they, whatever it is that's in there, it's very sharp. Um, so he's drawn blood on a number of occasions with me, but nothing too serious ever. Um, I have tried... Um, planting the tank out, so I had some lots and lots of spare plants, stuffed them in behind those rocks to see whether or not he would tolerate any plants. Nope, that was another negative. He wasn't having any of that. He did enjoy playing with the plants, he did enjoy ripping them to pieces, and he did enjoy eating them, so it's not a total loss. Um, he also enjoys eating snails, so there was quite the snail population in there, but he has definitely taken care of that. Um, so he's a fantastic little fish. Just a bit moody sometimes, like right now. I mentioned that I couldn't have plants in the tank, but that doesn't mean I can't have plants. So you'll see at the back here, I've got some lucky bamboo and some pothos growing out. And the pothos, I've just trained it to grow around the hanging light here. So I've got the hanging bracket for the light. The light is a Vivispar Spectra, I think it's called. It's a really good light. It's just, I had it for my marine tank when I had it, but it's completely dimmable and full spectrum. You can turn it up, turn it down, whatever you need it to do. Um, so I might as well use it. And it's quite cool having a hanging light. I like it like that. But it makes this like a bit of living art in and of itself. So eventually, as this goes round and round and round and round and round, it'll just be um, quite the spectacle. And it's really healthy as well. So it's definitely doing the job, sucking up a ton of nitrates for me. All the leaves are big, massive leaves, all look really healthy. Um, it does a great job. And this is the Felix that I mentioned earlier. It's basically a, a smart controller for your aquarium. So it's eight plug sockets, some USB sockets that you can fully control anything, whether it's your, um, the time your lights come on, your heater, it, connected to a Senai monitor so it can tell me the temperature, the pH, the light readings, all manner of things um, and loads and loads of new features coming out. So I am going to make a follow-up video on the Felix soon so make sure you click the subscribe button if you want to see that. Um, there's a load of new features that have come along for this thing. Um, continues to impress me and more than just because it's got the Night Rider light at the front. Uh, and then we can talk a little bit about food. Um, so this is what Humphrey gets. This is my new favourite invention here. I've had a few disasters recently of, in fact, I'll show you. If I get tubs like this, generally I buy all my fish food in bulk because I get through so much and then I transfer it into little tubs like this. Um, but what I've actually lost a load recently, I can't do this one-handed. Um, because I'm, I don't know whether it's old age or what's going on, but I get really clumsy and I'll knock something, whether it's onto the floor and then something like this, this is spirulina granules, I'll knock it onto the floor, the lid will just pop off and all this will go into the carpet or go into the nooks and crannies or even worse if I knock it into the tank and it completely fouls a tank. Um, so I've done it so many times recently, it's started to really do my head in. So I've been looking for tubs like this with proper screw lids. Um, so this lid is never coming off. In fact, I've just tightened it there, going the wrong way, Graham. Um, and that means I can knock that anywhere and it's not going to go anywhere at all. 
So in terms of the food that I feed Humphrey, he gets a mix in here, that's what I'll keep in here. It's Fluvo Bug Bites, it's a Carry Cichlid Gold, I've got some of the Excalibur foods that Michael from Michael's Fish Room sent me from the US. Um, it's just a mix of there, so he just gets a little pinch of that a couple of times a day. Like I say, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, it could have saved me so much. Even other lids that do have them, so I've noticed these foods here. This is another great food. I love this stuff. This is the Fish Science Tropical Worm Pellets. That does have a screw cap, but it also just pops off without much effort. So this one, luckily, I haven't lost any, but I have lost a whole thing of shrimp pellets from one of the other ones because the cap was a bit dodgy. And that's really my only criticism of the fish science foods that I've got so far. The food themselves, they're going down a treat with all my other fish. These pellets are a little bit too small for Humphrey. Um, but they're not, but he kind of ignores them because he doesn't realise it's food. But all my other fish go mad for this. So really love that. Um, and then when you get the other kind of packets that you get like this. So this is my food that I sell on my website. Random plug. Um, go and check it out. They've got the Ziploc ones. That's pretty good. I've not had any problems with these ones yet. Um, but what I tend to do is leave these open. And this one's a sealed one, so it's not even been opened yet. But when I do unlock it, I'll quite often forget to reseal it and then just go smack. It goes everywhere. So this is my next thing. Hopefully I will be selling these on the website soon. You'll see them pop up. But make sure you check out the website and you'll see them when they do arrive. As you can see from the substrate, he likes to do some landscaping. So he's kind of taken away all the sand there and made a nice little pit for himself. And then over on the back there, that's where he likes to sleep as such. He's cleared that out as well. So he will move things around. So if you are going to have decorations with a flower horn, you really need to be careful of not piling up rocks like this, for instance, because if he digs around at the substrate of that, they can all collapse. Those ones are all secure, so we're good to go there. Um, but yeah, it's a shame I can't get any plants in there because I really like using plants for nitrate control. That's why this thing here is such a good idea. Absolutely loves the nitrates and sucks them up like nobody's business. So you still can have a planted tank, even if you can't have plants in your tank. As always, remember we're nearly at our 10,000 subscriber goal and I'm doing my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, the prize box is it's up over a couple hundred quid worth of stuff in there at the moment and there will be more getting added to it soon. I've got a few things in the irons in the fire, so to speak, about some extra prizes. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future updates because I'll be adding more to it in the next few videos. Uh, and they'll be doing some more live streams as well where we'll add some more stuff in in the live streams. And then when we finally do cut, get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll do a live stream where I'll do the draw live. So you need to make sure you're following me. So click that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything. Uh, and remember, if you want a chance to win, all you have to do is comment in one of these videos, AA10K, hashtag AA10K. Right, we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed that little update. It was just a quick one today. I wanted to make sure everyone has been asking about Humphrey, how he's doing. You all get to see him and say hello. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, but as always, I'll see you in the next one and thank you for watching. Bye.